Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at the rendering of Ornatrix hair in V-Ray. In the latest free updates to both Ornatrix and V-Ray, we have introduced the ability to natively render Ornatrix hair in V-Ray. So let's take a look at how we can do this. The first thing we're going to do is open up the uh, render dialog, and we're going to set V-Ray to our renderer. Now we'll just click on render. What this is going to do is what it's done previously, which is use the Ornatrix render effect in order to render the hair in conjunction with V-Ray. So this is a good option. You can see that you pretty much get the exact same look that you would have with Scanline or another renderer. It renders right with V-Ray. The things that you don't get are the ability to uh, use V-Ray shaders on your hair or global illumination or reflections and refractions. And that's where you need a native V-Ray hair object. So to do that, what we're going to do is just uh, close this out. I'm going to hide this plain surface and select our hair. And we're going to add the V-Ray Ornatrix hair modifier. So we'll just scroll down here and pick V-Ray or Natrix Mod. The other thing we need to do is turn off this atmospheric effect for Ornatrix. I'll deactivate this, but take note that this render effect has some render settings, and those are things that we're going to have to add back in. So now when we render this out, we should be using uh, V-Ray Hair Primitive. You can see that this goes around and now we have uh, V-Ray hair. We definitely need to work on the render settings and the hair shader. So the first thing we'll do is adjust the render settings. Uh, they used to be located in the atmospheric effect and we're going to add them here through an Ornatrix modifier. So we're going to click on the modifier list and just add a OX render settings. Here we can adjust the thickness and taper of the hair and the global, you know, kind of overall thickness that we have. So we'll set this to 0.5 and render that out. Before I do that, I'll just uh, add a basic shader here. And there you can see pretty quickly we have our hair uh, tapered to a nice fine point at the end. The next thing that we really want to do is add a V-Ray hair shader. So for this standard shader, we'll replace it with the V-Ray hair material. And this is a great material that has a lot of options for customizing your hair to look just the way that you want. And it has some presets that you could choose from. So we'll choose this blonde shiny preset and just increase the diffuse color a little bit. And we'll render that out. So now we should be able to see that we have a nice shading set up uh, as far as the light casting on the hair and a nice taper with the hair. Um, it is a bit flat, so we definitely need some shading in the form of shadows. To do that, what we're going to do is just go and select our light. We'll turn shadows on, and we can either use V-Ray Shadows or the V-Ray Shadow Map. Uh, the V-Ray Shadow Map is pretty quick and will probably do for what we want here. I'm just going to increase the resolution a little bit and I'm also going to set my bucket size a little bit smaller so that we can see the progress as it comes. And we'll click render. Now we should start to see those shadows kind of come through and a lot better shading over all of the hair up through here and over here. The next thing that we can do is probably add a little bit more detail with uh, more hair and probably thinner hair. So we're going to select our uh, hair and in the render settings we'll make it a little bit thinner. Maybe go with a 0.35 on a global scale and we'll give it some more hair by going into hair from guides and under rendering we'll set this to 35. We'll re-render that. You can see you get a lot finer detail hair, a lot more of it and it kind of renders through pretty fast. I'm on a simple i7 laptop here, so don't expect blazing speeds. The next thing you would want to do is go in and adjust the anti-aliasing for some of these tips, which could probably use a little bit of work. We're just using the default AA, and uh, you'd want to adjust that for your production. 
Another option that can give you uh, pretty fast and smooth looking AA is to use an opacity map for the hair as it tapers. So let's try this out. We want to go into the render settings and just adjust this so that the actual hair geometry doesn't taper at all and maybe we'll set the size a little bit bigger because we're going to taper this with our opacity map. So let's go in to the materials and just to demonstrate this I'm going to use a basic uh, material here and in the diffuse slot we'll add the map that we're going to add to opacity. So we're going to go into uh, the V-Ray hair info text and you can see that this allows you to map a color and or map along the strands position in black or white. Now for opacity we'll probably want to swap these colors so that the black is at the tip and if we render this out we should kind of see the way that gradient goes along the map. This gives you a lot of flexibility as far as mapping colors and a lot of other things but we're going to probably use it for opacity here. So you can see these kind of black tips here that go through. Instead of using this for diffuse of course we're going to use it for opacity. So we'll go back to our map here. I'm going to copy this and in the opacity slot we're going to paste that in. When we are using uh, the opacity to uh, smooth out the hair at the ends and kind of taper it like this, fade it off, um, it's a good idea to check opaque shadows and opaque for GI depending on if you're using GR or not. We're not here. Um, this will speed up your renderers a little bit. Uh, and the other thing that's a good thing to do because we are using um, transparency is to go into the V-Ray tab and set the uh, max transparency levels a bit higher. And under settings you may want to increase, increase your dynamic memory limit uh, because you may be using a bit of memory to trace all those levels. So now we've kind of set that up we'll apply this to our hair and render that out. So you can see as this goes along it's not really because it's opacity mapped we're getting uh, some nice sampling even on the larger ends here uh, when we come in uh, over here and over here on the thin strands and uh, over here where we have thin strands there and when we start to get towards the end you have some nice anti-aliasing happening there and when we go towards the end here we're chewing those up with our buckets. You can see that we have really nice smooth uh, faded out hair at the ends, these nice wispy pieces of hair, which is what we're looking for. So I'll just uh, cancel this out and maybe quickly we'll just try another, uh, another preset and let that render through. So we'll set this to our red shiny material and maybe boost up the diffuse color a little bit to that red and render this through. So this is the basic setup of what you want to do in order to get your hair rendering in V-Ray with Ornatrix. You can take this to the next level by uh, adding all sorts of other you know, uh, advanced V-Ray features like global illumination, depth of field, camera effects, shadow effects, all those things should be possible within V-Ray. And when you're trying to get really photorealistic looking hair, it's highly recommended to use global illumination. When you do do that, you want to set the global illumination to be using brute force because this is going to more accurately scatter the light within the hair the way that you would want for photorealistic hair. And it's also going to prevent uh, any sort of flickering in the hair uh, as long as you use proper sample levels. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned about creating uh, Ornatrix hair and using V-Ray to render it out. Thank you very much.